welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I am here with Big Laughs, Danny Burke. Ha ha! We're going to be talking about the Queen today. You're not going to introduce me? Oh yeah, yeah. We're here with Queen Rebecca Felgate, the first. What is that what you refer to yourself? Queen, oh, I'm not referring to myself. That's what my Siri calls me. But anyway, this oh. is the top ten laws that the Queen shouldn't have to follow. Because yes, actually, she's the Queen, but she is not above the law. There are some laws she has to follow. And you did one a while ago, ages ago now, wasn't it? The mm. Laws. She does have to Yes, follow. some laws that she does have to follow, and that video went really big. Yeah. So you obviously love hearing about the Queen. Danny loves talking about the Queen. All day. So we yeah. thought we would queen it up. Now, some of these aren't like official laws, but more like practices and customs that she has to abide by. Yeah, maybe she's watching. Maybe mm -hmm. she'll learn something. Ooh. Coming in at number 10, she should be able to snog her husband. Shouldn't we all? I mean, we shouldn't all be able to snog Prince Philip, but like, if we have husbands, isn't it our right to snog them? PDAs are not A-OK -okay with royals. The Queen can't even hold hands with her husband, let alone kiss him. It is one thing for the Queen not to be able to touch non-royals, but her husband? Come on! The Queen is not free to act how she would like in public. There is a strict protocol when it comes to interacting with other people. While she is allowed to shake hands with high-profile members of society, and other royalty, this is a polite introduction. She is also allowed to dance with other members of high society at formal events, but she's not allowed to show any affection to her husband during public appearances, which seems pretty crazy to me considering they've been married for 71 years. Perhaps this royal law the Queen has to follow is one of the reasons the British are considered to have such stiff upper lips. I'm thinking Queenie should be able to loosen up those lips and pucker up to fill. Moving on to number 9 now, she should be able to sit how she wants. At first, I didn't even fully believe this one, but yes, there is actually a proper way for the Queen to sit down on a chair. I'm not talking about her not being allowed to do like a handstand on a chair. I'm talking about tiny details that most people wouldn't even notice, but some traditionalists definitely would. This one actually applies to the large royal family in general, but the guidelines state that the worst thing to possibly do is to sit with your legs crossed at the knee. The proper way, and this really is the key to it, is that the legs and the knees must be kept together. But Danny, I hear you ask, what about the ankles? Remember when I tell you the ankles don't matter. Okay, the Queen can cross them all day, but the legs and knees must never cross, else the world as we know it will end, or kind of. A popular way of incorporating this is the Duchess slant. Sitting position popularised by Kate Middleton. Is this too far? Should the Queen be allowed to sit with cross legs on a beanbag if she fancies it? If there's a vote, I vote yes. Is the Queen even allowed to sit on a beanbag chair? Oh, and what about blow up chairs of the 90s? Can the Queen sit on those? So many questions. So many questions. Coming in at number 8, she should be allowed to eat what she wants. For the love of shellfish, let the queen eat a prawn. While you would imagine that as a literal queen, you could eat whatever you want. When I imagine being queen, which I often do, I imagine that I'm laying on a chaise lounge, having man servants coming to feed me cheese, grapes, and wine all day. But in reality, it seems that the royal family's diets are strictly controlled. Things have sure changed since old King Henry's time, eh? He loved to feast on a turkey leg, but nay, no more. It is said that the queen queen likes to eat cornflakes for breakfast and by and large won't eat potatoes and pasta for dinner. Now those things are probably down to personal choice, but there are a few foods that are categorically off the menu, namely shellfish. I am a struggling vegetarian myself, but sometimes I do eat shellfish because I feel like it's okay to eat fish without eyes. Anyway, the queen apparently can never know the love of an oyster or a scallop. She can't eat raw fish either, which takes a lot of sushi off the menu. The reason being is that it's just simply too risky. Also deemed too risky is a curry. I'd be devastated if this was me. I'm actually going to be like sending that crown back because if I can't eat what I want and curry's off the menu, who even am I and what is the point in being queen? What is more British than Queen Liz and a Vindaloo? But unfortunately, they aren't a combo that can be enjoyed together. Okay, this is quite a big one for me coming in at number seven. She should be able to choose her own religion. I feel like it's a human right to be able to choose who or what to believe in. However, the queen has no choice but to be a Christian, a Protestant at that. The church and the crown have been intertwined since the beginning of the British monarchy. Monarchs of the past have believed that they were chosen by God to rule the country, which, I mean, sure. Prior to Henry VIII, the church basically 
basically had its own laws that monarchs even had to follow. A king or a queen is much lower in status than a god. But then Chappy Boy the Eighth decided he wanted out of his marriage and set up the Church of England, a Protestant Reformation. Since the C of E was formed in 1534 by his royal horniness, the crown has had a duty to uphold the faith, meaning a belief in God comes with the territory for the reigning monarch of the UK. That seems weirdly outdated for a very multicultural kingdom. Of course, if this is what the Queen wants and believes in, then that is amazing and I support it, but the point is, she doesn't actually have any choice, and I really don't think that religion should be forced on anyone. Coming at number 6 now, we're taking it down a notch in terms of seriousness, she should be allowed to take a selfie. Have you ever seen someone take a selfie with the Queen? Oh wait. I had a look, and honestly, on the whole of the internet, you'd be hard pressed to find a real selfie someone took with the Queen. Now this might be because the kind of people the Queen hangs out with probably aren't really into selfies, or maybe it's the prestigious events she attends, or maybe, just maybe, it's a secret rule of the royal family. Meghan Markle once told a fan that she and Prince Harry weren't allowed to take a selfie with them. That's right, they aren't actually allowed. Allowed sounds like the kind of word you would use if there was some sort of secret rule, am I right? Plot thickened in 2014 when US Ambassador Matthew Barzen revealed why the Queen doesn't like them. Eye contact. It's all about eye contact. Apparently the Queen prefers actually talking to people face to face, and these days the first thing people tend to do when they meet someone famous is to just swivel around and try and take a selfie. The Queen got sick of this, and it seems Seems like the rest of the royal family has followed suit. Oh, you're trying to take a selfie? I'm sorry, I can't. I'm queen. Say queen. 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 All right, never mind a selfie. She should be able to take a day off when she wants. The queen is always on duty. Her job is being the queen of the United Kingdom, and the only day she can stop being queen is when she dies. On the one hand, sure, she's the monarch of the country, but it's a very, very powerful job. She's also very privileged, so should she expect to Netflix and chill like us commoners? The thing is though, she actually is one of the hardest working people in the UK. All full time workers in the United Kingdom, even those at the very bottom of the job ladder, are entitled to 5.6 weeks of holiday pay a year. The Queen gets just two days, and even then, she's still on call. Every day the Queen receives a red box from the government. If you've ever seen the crown, then you will know this. The only two days she is not obliged to read the contents of these red boxes is on Christmas Day and Easter. Of course, she does make her famous Christmas. Day speech, but that is recorded beforehand. And it's not like these two are actually really days off anyway. The Queen does have other duties she likes to perform on Christmas and Easter. For one, she goes to church services, and she's always available if need be in the case of national emergency. Like I said, the Queen never gets a day off. Next up at number four now, the Queen shouldn't have to stay neutral. You have opinions, right? You probably shared your opinion public today somewhere. Maybe you told your mom that the pasta sauce tastes funny. Maybe you told someone on Twitter, Jaden Smith is actually a pretty good artist. Maybe you've already written a nasty comment about me in the comment section below. Doesn't matter what it is, the point is you share your opinions freely. Now that's something the Queen can't really do sometimes. As the head of state for the UK, she has to remain strictly neutral when it comes to anything political. No matter how much the government or politicians of any country is annoying the Queen, she can't say anything good or bad about them, ever. Since she became the Queen in 1952, she has seen 12 British British Prime Ministers come and go, and 12 US Presidents too. You know, she must have disliked a few of them, but she had to put down the phone and stop herself from tweeting it out. Good job, Elizabeth. Moving on to number three now, she should be allowed to say every word. This is a weird one, but I found an article where a social anthropologist outlined six words that the royal family, and most importantly, the Queen, are not really allowed to say. Six words they will only say to each other in private. Now, you might be thinking these are swear words, words that we would normally bleep out on a video like this if I was to say them, like this one. I'm kidding, I didn't say anything bad there. Okay, so the first word on this list is pardon, as in pardon, I didn't hear you. Instead, they're supposed to say sorry or sorry what. If the Queen still can't hear you, she'll just leave. Toilet is another word that's thought of as a little bit vulgar to say. Apparently, you're supposed to say loo instead. Perfume is another word that's supposed to be replaced with scent. I have no idea about that one. For all you British people who say that you're having some tea, as in your dinner, the Queen doesn't like that. You're supposed to actually say 
say dinner or supper. The next word on the list is lounge. No, 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 no. It's sitting or dining room. And finally, we have the word posh. Presumably because, I don't know, they are very posh and they hope if people don't say it, the word will go away. As you can see here, I'm now clutching at straws. Coming into number two, she should be allowed to vote. So this is an actual steadfast law. The Queen isn't allowed to vote. I totally understand the reasoning on some level, but on another it doesn't really make any sense. So according to the UK Parliament website, although not prohibited by law, it is considered unconstitutional for the monarch to vote in an election. So the reason the Queen can't vote is that she is supposed to be basically basically apolitical. She's supposed to support whoever is elected by the British public. The crown has long been losing its power steadily for hundreds of years. The queen can no longer make laws, although it certainly seems like she can break them. I'm not sure that I would be happy lending my support to someone when I never even had the slightest say who was in control. The queen will know more about UK politics than almost any living person, but she can't have her say. I don't know if that's fair. And finally number one now, we have she should be allowed to dress how she wants. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Queen chooses to dress the way she does. Of course, I understand that. There's a lot of tradition involved though as well. But perhaps the Queen should be allowed to loosen up a little bit. There's a certain level of etiquette to how the Queen looks when she steps out into the public eye. For example, she'll only be seen in clear nail polish. Also, she apparently has a clutch bag on her at all times, which she has to hold in a certain way. She'll often be seen wearing gloves, which is surely a sign from a bygone era, as well as hats at every single formal event. Some of these might be self impose rules, some of them might come from public pressure. Either way, we all need to loosen up sometimes in life, and maybe this is the best way to do it for the Queen. I've got a bonus one for you, Rebecca. Oh yeah? This is, this is just for you. She should just be allowed to be called Elizabeth. Oh, I like that. Or Liz. Imagine if everyone had to refer to you as the Queen, and you're just like, please, just call me Liz. Just There's no need. <laughs> stop, stop. Liz is fine. Yeah, because I hear her family call her Lilibet, but like, that's not appropriate. That Can't she be like, Lilibet. Lilibet. Yeah, and also, like, sometimes kings or queens don't even go by their real names. Like her dad was actually called Albert, but he was King George and it makes no sense. Free the queen's name. Free the queen's name. That was number 11 for you. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe and also let us know if you want any more videos like this. We could do one on like the president as well. Ooh, maybe. and more collaborations. Would you yeah. like one of Danny Landon and I perchance? Let us know in the comment section down below and we will see you beautiful people next time.